Hey, hey, and welcome to another Tech Tuesday. This is Chad from Ascension Worship. This week, we're having some fun with the brand new Waves Super Rack Performer, and we're gonna be using it with the Behringer Wing. Hey, 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 what do you say? Yes, it's that time again. It's Tech Tuesday. So real quick, if you are not using the Behringer Wing, still save for this for at least the beginning of this video. There's gonna be some important information. Um, let's first talk about what is Super Rack Performer, and more importantly, where should you use it and where should you not use it? So for people who want to use Waves plugins on their live console for either broadcast or live audio, uh, and you don't wanna buy a server, the, what the Wave Super Rack Performer does is it's specifically made to be used natively, meaning you can use your uh, computer to run the plugins. Now, the good thing about this is it saves you some money because you can use your existing hardware. The bad thing about this is it does add a little bit of latency because you're likely gonna be connecting through like a USB uh, port, which does inherently add some latency. Um, so this works really well if you're in a broadcast scenario because the latency doesn't really matter so long as it doesn't, exceed the amount of latency of your video. And usually video is gonna be a little bit behind audio anyway, so it's really not gonna be a big problem in that situation. Um, but if you wanna use it live, you can, so long as it's not so much latency that it affects what your uh, musicians on stage are experiencing. So how should you and should you not be using uh, the different Waves plugins? Uh, well, let me start by saying that the console is king. You always want to rely most on your console because if something happens to the Waves plugins or more likely your computer that is uh, connected to it, um, you need to be able to fall back on your mixer plugins. So what you wanna use Waves Super Act for is going to be things that your console cannot do or cannot do to the extent that you want them to do. So a good practical example of this um, would be uh, if you have a console that does not have any kind of pitch correction, which most don't. The Behringer Wing does, and it's okay, but an X32, pretty much all the on Heath consoles, um, they do not have any kind of pitch correction built in, so this could be an instance where Super Rat can fill in for that. Now, me personally, the main thing I wanna use it for is going to be using the Waves F6, which is an amazing dynamic EQ, which is really good for problem-solving issues. Now, the cool thing with pitch correction and dynamic EQ is that if something were to happen and I needed to turn all that stuff off, you probably wouldn't be able to tell um, super well in my mix that something has turned off. It just might sound a little bit harsher or the vocals might sound a little bit rougher. Um, what you don't wanna do is do something that is going to majorly affect your mix if you have to turn the plugin processing off. An example of this would be if you're using Waves X Feedback. This is a really cool concept for a plugin. It basically figures out for you your most sensitive feedback prone frequencies for a selected channel and EQs those out for you. The problem is if you have a pastor's microphone that is on the verge of feedback, X Feedback fixes that for you, but if in the middle of the service something happens and you have to turn that processing off, is your microphone going to immediately start feeding back? That would be no good. Now you can still use that plugin to figure out what you need to process on your board, but you wanna be careful to make sure that it's not the end of the world if you have to switch that processing off. So now that that's out of the way, let's take a look at how to set up a Behringer Wing uh, in Waves Super Rack Performer. Again, if you're using another console, some of this is going to be similar, some of it's gonna be different. Um, but let's just hop right in. So I have Performer opened up on here. I also have um, the Wing Edit app, which is also fairly new, um, so that you can see what we're doing. Um, if you're opening Performer for the first time, we're gonna start over here in the Setup menu, and you're going to select your device, which is going to be the Wing in this case, and you're gonna set up your buffer size. Uh, buffer size, the lower you can get it, the better you're gonna be with latency. However, the more um, prone you're gonna be to potential glitches in your audio. Um, so I would start by going as low as you can. And if you're having any issues with that, um, then raise it up, but make sure that you're checking to make sure that there's not too much latency for your musicians. Um, one thing I have found is if you are changing these settings um, either for the first time or you're just making modifications, um, sometimes performer will act up uh, if you 
are changing this after you've opened it. So if you do need to make a change, I suggest making the change, closing the app, reopening it, and then I've found that you'll have better experience after that. Um, so once you have your device set and your buffer size set, we're gonna go over here to settings. Uh, and then under startup session, as a default, it will say previous session. If you forgot to save anything, it will reload that session and wipe out all your settings. So I suggest doing last state instead. All right, now we're gonna move over here to where it says patch. Now I'm not going to go into all of why this is the way it is, but I'm gonna tell you what I like to do is to take this first latency group, we're gonna just call it all, and we're gonna select very quickly and easily all the built-in 64 racks that we have on here, just to make sure that everything's coming out at the same time. Uh, if you're in a broadcast situation, this is probably gonna change a little bit. I have other videos you can check out where we go into that more deeply. But for right now, we're gonna start with everything on the same latency group. Next, we're gonna go over to overview one. This is where we're gonna see all of our routing. Currently, nothing is routed because we just started the new session. So very easy, no matter which rack we have selected, up at the top left, there is a down arrow. At the bottom of that, we're gonna have auto route all racks. We're gonna click on that and hit OK. Now we've just created a one-to-one -one patch, uh, mono patch for everything in SuperRack. This is the easiest way to control this. There are ways around that. I suggest trying to stick to this as much as possible. Uh, let's demonstrate real quick. If you had something in stereo, let's say that we had on inputs nine and 10, in this case, rack nine and 10, uh, stereo keyboard. Right now, nine is mono, 10 is mono. We can go up here to where it says wing in, and we're gonna change this from a sub being mono nine to stereo nine and 10. And it's gonna give us a warning that the next channel over is also routed output 10. It's gonna turn that off for us, which is very handy. So we're gonna hit okay. And you can see over here, it has changed our routing to stereo on channel nine and it has turned off the routing in channel 10. I'm gonna go one step further and turn channel 10's processing off so I have a visual marker that we're not using that. And at rack 10 at the top, we're gonna change this to input none. And so now it's basically a placeholder if later on instead of two, uh, or sorry, one stereo channel uh, for the keyboard, I might have two mono channels. Rack 10 is already there. I can put that back into being a mono input and nine is a mono input if I felt like I needed to. Um, okay. so. We now need to uh, route all of our audio from our inputs into uh, SuperRack. So we're gonna hop over here to the wing editor. Um, this is gonna be very similar to uh, what you see on the actual console. It's just easier for me to show it to you on here. Uh, so we're gonna go to routing. Up here at the top right, we have outputs and we are adjusting the output group for the USB audio. You can see currently nothing's routed. I'm gonna select output one, the plus one auto, and it automatically selects the unlock button for us, so that's all good. What I wanna do in this hypothetical situation is we're gonna send 32 channels uh, from our stage, so through AES50A, is gonna come into channels one through 32 of SuperRack, and then I'm gonna have a microphone plugged into um, local one, which is going to be sent through 33 through 40 um, for, uh, for SuperRack on there. So we're gonna start with our source group, AS50A, and we are going to just click 32 times. Very exciting stuff. Almost there. So now if we have those keyboards plugged into inputs nine and 10, we would see them coming through uh, Wave Super Rack on Rack 9 and Rack 10. Uh, now that we're on uh, output 33, we're gonna switch our output group to local ends, and you can see there's some level on that microphone. So we're gonna patch those to 33 through 40. And if we go back to Super Rack and look at Rack 33, you can now see that there is audio coming in on rack 33, which is my microphone that I have set up off to the side here. 
All right, so while we're in the wing editor, let's go ahead and make it to where we can have a uh, switch that will go between our unprocessed original audio and our audio coming from Wave Super Rack. This will give us the ability later on to have a kill switch, so if something goes wrong, we can go back and hear our unprocessed audio without having to do a whole bunch of steps. So we're gonna go to uh, Setup, Audio, and down here you have Input Select, Main and Alt. Um, if you click in this little box here, it's gonna give you this menu. Um, for what we're doing today, we want channels one through 40 to be blue like they are on my screen right now. And then we want the auto input select buttons one through 40 to be yellow. This means that when I switch the uh, master switch, it will make all these one through 40 switch uh, between the main input and the alternate input. Alternate input will be what's coming from Wave Super App. So if I go up here to Alt now, you can see if I click on that, it changes everything to yellow. So let's go look now at my channel 33, which is my MC microphone. Um, and you can see that we are no longer getting audio on that channel. If I go up here to my input page, if I go to main, we have audio coming in because that's what's coming in through the actual local input. But Alt, we need to tell it to listen to Super Rack, which if you remember, that was USB audio, and then 33, again, you can see my level there, and now we have level coming into the console through Super Rack. Um, I can show you that without, uh, I can show you that by going over to Super Rack. Hey, hey, check, check, if I mute this channel, hey, hey, one, two, one, two, you see we have cut off signal to what's going back to the wing. Let's turn that back on. So, uh, let's real quickly, we're gonna set up a button on the console that can do that for us without us having to go through any of the menus. Um, and to do that, we're gonna go to the user assignable section on the wing. All right, so on the wing over here, you can see you've got a user assignable section, which is pretty awesome. Um, on the lower half, we're gonna click the view button and then make sure that user is selected. Uh, I want, for me, this bottom left button to switch between my main and my alternate inputs. Um, so on the screen, I'm gonna click that button. Function, we're gonna go to other, and then select global main slash alt. Uh, and that will switch everything. So if I hit that button right now, it's red, or sorry, orange. <laughs> So right now, if I hit that orange button, we are back to hearing everything without any of the waves processing. If I hit the orange button and it's lit up, that means that we're hearing everything with the waves processing. Cool, all right, so one last thing I wanna do for the purpose of this video um, is to show you another way that you can do this if you have any problems with uh, latency or people hearing things that don't jive with their in-ear mixes. Um, in particular, if you're using the pitch correction from waves instead of the one that's built into the Behringer wing, uh, the person listening to that in-ear mix is hearing a combination of their head voice with uh, the tuned audio coming from waves, and it can be a little bit disorienting. It sounds like there's a chorus going on in your head. Um, so right now, any channel that is processed through waves, the people in the in-ears are gonna hear all that processing. Um, for select channels, what we're gonna do is use an insert instead, and this will give you the ability to um, pick a different tap point for what the musicians hear versus what's gonna come out to the live crowd. So to do that, we are going to go uh, back to our channel strip for MC1. Uh, we're gonna pretend like this is a singing microphone for right now. So what we're gonna do is first we're gonna go to our input and we're going to put this back to main and manual because now the majority of our channel strip is gonna be coming straight through. We're then gonna go down to our insert, the first one, the one that's before the fader. We're gonna turn that on for our effects processor. I have this number uh, 16 slot is open, so we're gonna click on that. We're then gonna go to effects type, external. Don't let this get too confusing for you. We're gonna basically take the same information we did before and apply it to this effect instead. So we're gonna go to our first uh, send here, click on it. We want to send um, the effect 
so this routing, uh, this insert into our um, Wave Super Rack. So we're gonna go to output USB audio. Uh, we're sending again through channel 33. Instead of us sending local one, um, because local one is gonna be coming through that channel strip, we're gonna go to source group, effects send, and then 16 left. All right, we can go back to our channel strip and our insert. We then need that audio to come back in. We can do effects mode mono. I don't think it really matters, but we'll do that. And then return, we're gonna click on USB 33. So we have now routed our audio out and back in. Um, this is going to only have the effect in front of house that we are moving our processing later in the chain rather than earlier. But because we've done that, we can move our tap point to before this processing so that our musicians on stage will hear it without the waves processing while the people at front of house will hear it with the waves processing. So to do that, we're gonna go to our sends page and up here at tap point, we're gonna select anything five or earlier because five is before insert one. So if I click on five, now I have routed my audio um, without the waves processing for any pre-fade mixes on the board, but our main mix is going to hear it with that processing on there. And that's it. I hope that was helpful for somebody. Uh, I haven't really gone over the plugins themselves, except to say that I really like the F6. I think that's probably one of the best uses for this. Um, if you guys have questions about the plugins, please let me know. I'd love to do some follow-up videos on this, but I hope this was helpful for somebody. Until next time, have a great week. Again, this is Chad from Ascension Worship. I hope this has been helpful for you and your team. Come back here every Tuesday for new information.